Everything I've done, it's sort of like it just happened. I don't remember planning for things. Um, it, they just sort of showed up on my doorstep. I took a uh, class at school, independent study in accounting. Never took an accounting class in high school, bookkeeping, had no idea what it was about. Uh, I thought, oh, here's a class that's independent study. That's easy. I don't have to go to class. I'm good at working on my own. I don't have to be with all those people. So I go to class. I take the pretest, and I fail horribly because I don't know anything about accounting. So I have to go to class. So I go to class, and all of a sudden, it all makes sense to me. And that was where I belonged. Accounting is like a jigsaw puzzle. I always grew up liking jigsaw puzzles. And so there's a sense of accomplishment in what I was doing. Uh, it Once it clicked what a debit versus a credit was, it was business-based. My dad had his own business. It just felt right. It felt like I was where I was supposed to be. What I'm really good at, I believe, is reading the story, figuring out what the story is that the numbers tell you, and problem solving. It seems to come to me naturally. I can look at a set of financial statements and figure out what the message is, or people can present a problem, and to me, problems are just opportunities to solve. They're not bad things that you have to get rid of. What's most meaningful to me about my work is that I can see the light go on when somebody gets it. When you explain something, it seems like I, I'm always educating or teaching, learning myself, but also teaching as I go along, no matter what it is. So what I've always done at work is teach. And what I've taught is how to interpret or tell the story that accounting provides you in the financial statements. So my role has always been, here's a user, they need financial statements to help them understand what they're doing, I can translate that into English. I can take this accounting business language, translate it into English. Most people are terrified because they think it's numbers. And they think it's numbers, and they think back to word problems in third or fourth grade, and then they hated math after that, and so therefore they aren't gonna like accounting, there's too many numbers, and therefore they don't understand their statements but their statements are how they make decisions. Their statements provide them the information to do the work they're doing. So it should be there as a source of help, not as an element of fear. The numbers should always support the mission of the organization. They should not drive the mission. And that's one of the things I would, my accounting students, it was always, you're not gonna be a good accountant if you sit behind the desk. You have to get out and understand what the mission of the organization, whether it's for-profit, non-profit, understand what it is that the organization does and then help provide the information they need to run it to make decisions. I would say my faith in the Holy Spirit. I really believe she's around all the time and that that is huge for me. Belief that she is there allows me to not have to control the situation. I can totally say, it's in your hands. I do not know what to do. So years ago, I was working on a project. We were trying to get something through a city. The, the, the city council was very dysfunctional. And I would literally drive into the city saying, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do today. I don't know what to say at this meeting. I don't know how to react to these people. Um, well, I have a meeting, it's going to be very tense. Tell me what to say, tell me what to do, just be with me. I don't know how else to say it, but I would get through those meetings. Um, hopefully I said some things that were good, or I was able to calm a situation, or I was able to not overreact. But I would get a calming presence. If I gave up the control, if I said it's all yours, then I, I could relax because it wasn't mine to deal with anymore. She was there, she was with me, she was gonna help me through the process. Well, whenever I switch jobs, which I do every four to five, six years, um, I actually put all the work on the part of the Holy Spirit. I do not worry about, somebody once, or our priest used to always say, um, if you wanna make God laugh, tell him your plan. And I have learned that 
stuff just shows up on my doorstep. So I've tried to retire three or four times in a job or, or an organization. Something shows up and says, can you do this? And I do a lot of praying to the Holy Spirit. I have no fear of leaving a job if it isn't a good fit or if there's an integrity issue. I don't have a fear of taking another position as long as I'm learning um, and doing something new and not bored. I go for it. I want to keep making a contribution. So even if I retire someday, I want to make a difference. So uh, whether it's in a volunteer position or whether I get another part-time position, I, I really want to make a difference in people's lives one way or the other. And again, I don't provide much direct service support, but if I can help people um, with information so they can accomplish the mission, then that's important. I was so lucky to take that class of independent study. I, I Now tell me the Holy Spirit wasn't there. There's no other reason for me to take a class in accounting, none. And to have it come naturally and then to be able to use it to translate and to see, get the joy of being able to translate it and have fun with it. And then in the process, I've met all these great people. I've had wonderful experiences at so many different companies. And then I have a great family. So I'm a lucky person. I'm a very lucky person.